Hey guys, Thunder E here and welcome to another battle vid. Now this one is between the iPhone 15 Pro Max and the Galaxy S23 Ultra. And we're gonna look at a couple of key things around these devices, starting off with speakers. Yes, I know I haven't done a speaker test yet, but this is a prime way to show that. Now we do know that iPhones and Galaxies usually have very good speakers on them and the 15 Pro uh, Max should be no slouch. So let's see how they stack up against the Galaxy S23 Ultra in what it brings to the table in terms of audio. All right, so there we have it. Right off the bat, you can clearly tell that the iPhone 15 Pro Max has just better audio quality. And this is kind of following the trend we saw with the S23 Ultra where we compared it to the iPhone 14 Pro Max and it also was lagging behind. Samsung did something with their speakers that I don't like. And I think uh, the iPhone just continues that trend we've seen lately from Apple, where the older quality has been clean and crisp all the way through. So I definitely like it. And I think you guys will enjoy that too. Okay, let's move over to benchmarks. What kind of benchmarks are we getting and how does that lead into gaming? Well, we do know the iPhone has the brand new A17 Pro chipset, not an A17 Bionic. And this chipset is giving us some really cool features. Six cores in the GPU. We've also got a higher performance in terms of 20% more on the GPU, 10% on the CPU, just to name a few things. While the Galaxy has the uh, Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 chipset for Galaxy. This is meant to be one of the most uh, prioritized chipsets in the 8 Gen 2 line, uh, giving us some really good performance we've seen throughout the year. So how do they stack up? So taking a look at Geekbench 6 and looking at the single core scores, Galaxy is at 1,976, while the iPhone is at 2,908. That is almost a 1,000 point difference. While on multi-core scores, the Galaxy is at 5,269 and the iPhone is at 7,194. That is almost a 2,000 point uh, uh, jump there. So that is truly impressive. Now you're going, okay, what, what does that do? But before we go do that, let's go ahead and check out GPU scores. Now, I do want to remind you here that GPU scores are a little bit different because the Galaxy uses OpenCL for its GPU uh, rendering while um, the iPhone 15 Pro Max uses Metal. And the scores are a stark difference from one another. The Galaxy is 9,225, which is, which is great. Uh, while the iPhone is 27,431. Now, granted, these are not apples to oranges or even a clear match, but it just shows you where those numbers lie and you can make that decision for yourself. So what does that mean? Now, I will first send you off to my gaming video to go check that out and see some of the gaming performance there on the iPhone as well as also on the Galaxy. But I can tell you this, that gaming performance for both devices are really solid getting smooth gameplay. But the big kicker here is this, the iPhone 15 Pro Max and the iPhone 15 Pro line in general can play console level games. And looking at that, I'm talking about Resident Evil Village, being able to play that directly on your iPhone is truly impressive. And I think a lot of people are going to like that. On the downside though, I don't like the high temperatures I'm getting off the iPhone for uh, mobile games, playing games like Genshin Impact and getting 112 degrees in terms of temperature. 
is very high in comparison to what we're getting on the Galaxy, which is roughly around 109. So there you have it in terms of gaming. I think the slight edge goes to the iPhone 15 Pro Max just because it plays console games, whether that is just the GPU itself, the new GPU, and of course the new processor, or that also entails just better software in terms of developers matching and bringing those games. But you can play console games on your iPhone. All right, let's move over to the cameras. Now, this is a place where there is going to be a lot of preference involved with both devices in terms of what you like and what you don't like. Uh, they have some really new camera modules on here with uh, the iPhone having basically seven lenses according to Apple. Even though, yeah, you can, you can only see three camera, uh, camera housings here. You do have the ultra wide, and then when you go in, you have your 1X, which gives you um, uh, 24 millimeter, and then you have your 1.2 giving you 28 millimeter, and then you have uh, your 1.5 giving you 35 millimeter, and then you also have the 5X zoom as well. So you have multiple lenses, or at least uh, facsimile of lenses on the iPhone, while the Galaxy, of course, has multiple lenses as well, and multiple zoom ranges. So you do have, of course, the ultra wide, a 1X, uh, 2X, uh, 3, 2x is digital, as well as also uh, you have that 10x zoom, and then you can go all the way to 100. So what does that mean for images? Well, like I said, check out our camera comparison, and you can see where the differences lie, and where those details stay within both devices. But that being said though, when it comes to zoom, it's a very interesting predicament. I look at it this way, I say, hey, when it comes to getting those shots between the 1x all the way all to the 5, so basically the 5x is a 120 millimeter lens, the iPhone does a really good job there. And I think you can see a lot of that clear details there. But when you're looking at extending in terms of going past that, the Galaxy does a much better job at having that extended zoom out there. Now, both zoom lenses are very different in terms of the way they work. The Galaxy has a periscopic zoom and the iPhone has a Tetra Prism lens, which is built differently. So that's just putting it out there for you. And I think you're gonna find that camera comparison very detailed and very interesting. So go ahead and check that out. Now, when it comes to battery life, this is something that's quite interesting in terms of both devices. The Galaxy, I've been using it for almost nine months now within the year, and I have to say the battery life has been impressive, being able to run a full day, I meaning uh, from 8 a.m. to roughly around 11 p.m., where it gets down to about 10% that I need to charge, is impressive. I am a heavy user, and it does really well. While the iPhone 15 Pro Max, I haven't spent enough time using it to actually detail the battery life, but just from my use case so far, it feels closer to the 14 Pro Max uh, than say the Galaxy in terms of this battery life usage. So take that as you will. Uh, I will say though, I do need some more time. So I will be giving you more details on that later on in my month long review of the 15 Pro Max. And then we move over to USB Type-C. Yes, this one is very interesting because the iPhone now has the same charging port as the Galaxy. And that is something that you will find useful because now all your cables are the same. You don't have a separate cable, which is great. Now, in terms of charging speeds, the iPhone charging speeds are still the same. Um, uh, they, are, they are not past 40 watt charging, which the Galaxy has 45 watts. So the Galaxy will charge faster, but the iPhone is technically capable because you have a USB uh, 3.2 port. Also has uh, data transfer speeds up to 10 gigabits per second, which is great. So that's something that they both share, but the, the Galaxy has the slight edge on that part. And then finally, when we come to special features, this is where both devices now have uh, different tricks up their sleeves. And we start off with the iPhone 15 Pro Max with that loaded action button. Now the action button has come into place, the, the uh, slide that we had previously on the iPhone devices, and it is very remappable and it's a great tool. So on default, it's, it basically can put your phone into silent, you press and hold, and that's pretty much it but you can also map it to different things. Say for instance, your camera, and you can set it with different camera settings, whether it's a selfie camera to activate that, the rear camera video, whichever you wanna do, and you can snap a photo using that button or 
long press and hold to start recording. Uh, that's something that's easy. You also have different other features like uh, putting it in focus mode, uh, timer, a flashlight. You can also use shortcuts to select specific applications. And in my case, it's been Resident Evil Village because it's easy for me to just pick up the device, press and hold the button and get back into the gameplay session. So that actually works out well. Another feature that the iPhone 15 Pro Max has is uh, standby which is something that can be activated uh, directly through the settings or just automatically once you put it on a MagSafe stand. And in, of course, landscape mode, it gives you this portrait view where you can quickly access things like your calendar, clock, you can also go into your streaming services like Apple TV Plus. Um, and it's a nice way to use your phone as a stand clock if you choose to, but also at night when you're going to bed because it knows you have a sleep and focus routine the screen will completely go dark. So it doesn't just stay in um, screensaver mode, it actually goes dark all the way through. So don't worry about that. Now with the Galaxy, the Galaxy still can do those things. Now, if you have a Galaxy S23 Ultra device, you know that just off the jump, uh, the power button is remapped with a double press that leads you straight to the camera. Now you cannot take photos with the power button, but you can use the volume rockers to take photos uh, if you want to. You can also remap the, that power button as well for more features by going to your settings uh, and going to advanced features and going into side key. And then you will find the ability to remap it to any application you want to, including your flashlight as well, uh, by simply just double tapping plus you know, it's easy to just use effectively. And I went ahead and remapped it to Call of Duty uh, Mobile, and I was able to just double tap and get right back into that gaming session. Now, the other thing that the Galaxy has that the iPhone or any other device just doesn't have is the S Pen. S, S Pen is a very solid tool, especially the fact that you can use it for writing, dictating, doing different things on the device. It also has that remote control feature, allowing you to take photos of yourself remotely using the rear camera and not having to wait or run back and forth with a timer. So that actually is pretty cool and effective. Now, the other thing to note with the S Pen is that you can also remap certain applications to the button on the S Pen with a double tap as well. And I went ahead and remapped PUBG Mobile to that. So there, in terms of those features, the Galaxy has more features uh, to use with the S23 Ultra uh, as opposed to the iPhone, which has just the action button there. So when we look at everything together, right, these things are are basically juggernauts in the top tier premium smartphone space. Which would you pick? That is the main question. And honestly, that is left up to you. You might look at the photos and go, hmm, there's some, I prefer maybe the Galaxy over the iPhone, or I prefer the iPhone over the Galaxy, or vice versa. It doesn't matter. You can look at each device and pick the preference for yourself. So I pose that question to you guys. Who do you think won and which device would you be picking up? Let me know if you have any questions, any comments. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and always enjoy your entertainments.